this is Roger, thanks for dropping by. I got told off about my phalaenopsis, so, um, well, this is what I'm going to do. Um, I'm working on my um, phalaenopsis sweet memory, so I'm just getting my scissors out of the alcohol, give them a chance to dry off a bit. Um, the sweet memory um, has signs of a problem. It's difficult to say what, but this could have been a consequence of the real excessive heat and at the time um, because this was in bloom it was put in such a place so that I could see the blooms and at that point which was for some considerable time I think it got too much light so I think this is the effect of uh, possibly too much light possibly some deficiencies possibly lack of hydration which would also impose deficiencies on it because if you're not getting enough hydration in the plant you can't be getting enough food in there either but irrespective of what's gone wrong with that difficult to find out exactly what um, I checked when it was last repotted and, and it's been in that pot less than a year um, so it wasn't you know that I've got no worries about the media breaking down there is a bit of algae in the pot but not enough to worry about um, but it was commented on that um, I should give the plant a chance and forget the spike. So first job is the spikes coming off. So that's done. That will give the plant a rest effectively. And um, I'm just going to pop a bit of cinnamon on that. that that's a, quite a thick spike to actually have um, a bare wound on it. So we'll just uh, dry off the end of that careful not to get any on the leaves or the stem because it will dry those up as well so that should just seal that wound um, that's all I'm going to do with this apart from the fact um, I've now got much lower light levels and even though I've got um, you know winter grow lights on um, it's in a shadier spot now um, Sweet Memory, I believe, is a primary cross. I think it's got Valacia in it and something else. I've, I've forgotten which. But um, as far as I know, both of those are warm growers, so this might not be so happy through the winter. But because of the lower light levels, I'm going to raise it up because it was on a very low shelf, which would naturally be cooler. So I'm going to get this up somewhere where it's still got, you know, relatively low light, but a bit warmer for it. Um, and I have just noticed there's a new spike growing. I will let that grow. Because um, if I take that one off as it grows, it'll be a very long time before it puts up another one. So um, that's all I'm going to do for that one. Let's get that one right out of the way. And there's a reason for getting that right out of the way. There's my towel. Because the next thing I'm going to have a go at is this... Uh, Sideria japonica, or now renamed Phalaenopsis japonica. Now, I'm relatively confident that this is a virus, but the proof of the pudding will be what happens next rather than what's already happened. Um, I did a bit of thinking on this, and I had a, some of you that have been following me a fair amount of time, because it's a while ago, I had a dendrobium that had no ID. Um, it was probably a cross that had quite a lot of unicum in it. It, it, it had a mass of lovely bright orange flowers on it um, a while back. I can't remember when. Um, but that had this leaf patterning on it quite bad. And I thought, well, after you've bloomed, you should produce some new growths, which it did. And the new growths came out like that, so I dumped the plant. Well, that was its last chance, because it was never a happy plant anyway. So th if this is a virus, it's not going to recover. But if it's, um, <laughs> this could be the result of heat damage because this is a cool grower. It actually comes from Japan. It may even be the only Phalaenopsis from Japan because most of the Phalaenopsis species come from in and around the Philippines. That's their main concentration. But it's a cool grower which is unusual for a phalaenopsis. Most are warm growers. This is a cool grower. Well, it wouldn't have liked my summer, would it? Maybe that's what's done the damage. So I'm going to give it a chance. Um, so I'm just re-sterilising the scissors while I uh, natter. <laughs> um, for this plant, sterilisation 
really important before and after because if it is a virus that is your main way of spreading a virus is cutting tools and non-clean pots that have had a you know if a virus is around it can be in media um, you know it, it, if it's around your plant needs to be well separated out which this is getting nothing nowhere near anything else ever again until I'm confident what's gone wrong with it um, first job it's been in that pot over two years. Now that's a mistake on my part. It's in large bark, but this pot will not dry out down here. And most of the roots are at the top, yeah? So to keep the roots hydrated, I water it, and then that makes that even wetter. So the bottom of this pot's probably quite soggy, but soggy or not, it's coming out. It's been in here quite a long time, and it could be that because this is staying damp, the roots are not penetrating into here because it's very acidic and so they may have tried and then the root tip dies off but um, let's get it out and see what we're working with it doesn't smell gone I must admit and it's still firm so I don't think it was the bottom of the pot that was the problem but um, read in several places that this one does better mounted because it's one of those that needs to dry fast. Um, and it, that could, you know, that could be to do with the fact that it's a cool grower. It, you know, in its natural environment, it would possibly dry slower. Now, unfortunately, these roots down here, which are perfectly viable, are well stuck to that bark. If I try and take that bark off, I'm going to damage those roots. So, even though I'm going to mount this, those roots are going to stay. In fact, there's, there's very little to do with this. All these roots, uh, there's a couple of um, dead roots that I will trim. Let's get me skizzers, let them dry off a little bit first while I waffle on. So the um, alcohol sterilizing process is not based on dipping the scissors in it, it's based on dipping them in it and then letting them dry. It's the drying effect that's important. But what I've done is, um, the um, <laughs> map of Italy, or the boot piece of bark, as it was nicknamed. Um, I'm going to use that piece to mount this. Um, I've just realised I haven't got any moss at the moment. I will go and get some. Uh, I'll take a break or something. But I was going to cut that off, and then I thought, well, it actually makes it quite an attractive mount. So um, while those scissors are drying off, we'll just uh, do the hook. Now I've got to be careful here, because this is lopsided, if I put the hook in the middle of that bit, it's always going to hang wrong. So I'm going to move the hook over a bit and make it a bit more central. So we'll go in about there, I think. And this is a sharpened screwdriver. Emphasis on the sharpened. When it comes out the other side, if your finger's in the way, it will make a hole in it. It is sharp. It's deliberately done to make holes rather than do up screws. And because I'm using quite a large piece of wire, I'm just going to push. This is a crosshead screwdriver, but the end of it makes quite a nice sort of blade to just expand the hole and make it a bit bigger. Right. That's that done. Piece of wire here. This is getting shorter and shorter. This is all of my thick wire. I'm pretty sure I've got quite a lot down in the shed, um, in the bonsai bag, bag of bits. But, uh, yeah. So just take that over like that and then bring this bit up and because this is thick wire I'm going to need a bit of help with the old pliers just to pinch that in place. Um, I know some people make two holes and um, you know secure their wire that way. That's, I've always done it like this and I'm happy with this. Once it's pinched like that it doesn't wobble around and then I only have to make one hole. Now this is never going to be a tall plant. So I don't need a really long hook on it. I only need quite a short hook because it, it's going to be that way. It's, it's never going to grow tall. So I only need a short hook. So we'll just whack that off about there. Save that for Ron. Later Ron. And then we can just bend that over. Right there. And give me 
yourself a nice hanging hook. So that's the mount prepared. Those scissors are dry now, so you can crack on with that. This is um, quite early in the morning, and I don't normally do kitchen stuff in the morning, but I've got to water my mounts today, and I need to go out this afternoon. Right, so now we've got a rotten root end there. So what I usually do is I snip it and then have a look. We'll go back a bit further until I see nice bright green, at which point the root's live. And it may branch. Looking at this root system, I can't see any root that's branched. So that root might not make it um, because it's had its root tip damage. There's an old dead one there that's coming off. That one's long since uh, ceased to be. So we'll, uh, so I'm just trying to find where it starts. Let's see if we can go back into some live tissue a bit more. Yep, that's live now. The end of that one's gone, and that's at the base of the plant, so that can come off. In fact, given the number of roots I've got at the top of the plant, I think I'm going to take the base of the plant actually off. So I think we'll come in on the rhizome about there. There's another reason for doing that. Oh, goody. <laughs> The rhizome's clean, so that, that excludes one potential problem. That root's cracked off near the base. That one's got a black tip, you can come off. So even if a, a Phalaenopsis root loses its growing tip, and if you look at this Phalaenopsis, there are no growing tips. There are no green tips on any of these roots. So they're not actively growing. Um, can I take any more off? Dare I risk it? Well, that one looks a bit manky, you can come off at the base. How are we doing now? Well, as I said, most of these roots are um, viable. I would like to get a bit more of this bark off, but I don't want to damage the existing roots. Some of it is just teasing off quite easily. Because if you, if you tear it off, what you do is you remove a part of the velamen and, and that's a potential place for rot to set in because you've damaged the surface. And these big bits don't want to come off. Oh, that one will. Yeah. Yeah, I think we'll leave those. I don't want to go mad. I'm going to say this, this, this plant's not happy at the moment, so I want to give it the best chance possible. Now, as far as the leaves are concerned, that leaf's coming off. I wonder if I could pull it off gently. Yeah, I can. There we go, that's that one done. And the other one doesn't seem too far gone, but it's got to the point where there's cell damage. That won't ever recover. So I think I'm going to take another leaf off. That leaves me three. Um, I mean, this doesn't grow into a huge plant ever, so three leaves are enough to support it. And those leaves don't look too bad. That's not a bad root system at all for a little Phalaenopsis. So I think we'll leave it at that. Okay. Right, I need to go and get some moss, and then we'll get that one mounted. Okay, let's see what we can do. Just had another quick read up on this one and I found several places that do actually recommend because of its need for a fast wet dry cycle, I found several words, writings that recommend mounting this one. Um, so, you know, maybe this is the way to go, the way to get it to recover best. Now, this is going to be a pain, isn't it? Because these roots are quite brittle and I've got to try and get it flat. So I think there's going to be some roots hanging off of the media. Um, but what I'm hoping is that um, those that touch will attach. Because um, uh, it's just something about once roots attach on a mount, they, they, the plant seems to start doing better from that point on. Um, perhaps could have done with a slightly larger mount. But there's certainly more than enough roots touching. And obviously, if it does recover, it's going to produce some more roots. 
Now I'm not happy with that angle. I'd rather have the plant looking nice. So we might have to tuck some of them roots over the top. Now that way I can spread some of these out to the side, take advantage of that uh, long piece. Actually that root is, it is, that root is a branch, it does branch, but not very often. So that will get some roots out sideways and I can just adjust these into various places so that I've got as many touching the bark as possible. It's a bit silly doing it now but I'm just get, trying to get an impression of what it's going to look like when it's done. I might even be able to get that long one to go down there. But that's not going to attach that piece of bark in the way so it's actually cracked. I think I'll take it off. That take, takes the manky bark off as well. Um, I'm not happy with that root. That's coming off too. Right, so that leaves us the nice fleshy ones in the main. Got a nice one to attach there. Quite a few going out in that direction. Yeah, that one's cracked as well. Take that one off. That leaves us some pretty good roots and quite a good spread around the mount and the aspect of the plant's not too bad now. It, it is sticky out but it will, if it grows, if it lives, it will start to move upright as new leaves come. The next new leaf will probably do that, yeah? And then if there's ever another one, it will come out there and then gradually it will do that. Um, it is a bit sticking straight out at the moment. Right, so that's how I want it. I don't want any moss underneath it. So I can just let that sit now while I get some dry hands. <coughs> mess with fishing line if you've got wet hands it sticks like anything and I'm gonna need a fair bit because I'm gonna have to go round quite a few times although it's not a big mount to get the moss to stay I'm gonna have to go round at all angles if you see what I mean not just the normal upright mount where you just go round in one direction I'm probably gonna have to go round quite a bit with this to get it to sit nicely and pull the roots back against the bark in as many places as possible. Right, so we'll start off with a loop, like we what we normally do, with a nice long end to it, so I've got something to tie on to when I finish winding. Right. I'm even gonna start that vertically, which means going over the hook right over the boot round about there and once I pull this tight the plants held and I can start positioning my moss and then subsequent turns will hold the moss in place that are my theory right. I will need to go steady because fishing line can cut in and with larger fleshy roots you're liable to do more damage than you will with the little fine ones. I know that sounds back to front, but that's what I've found. Now, this is not getting smothered in moss. It is getting a little bit with gaps. So that although the moss will help the plant hydrate, it's not going to keep the roots soggy by having too much. But um, if it needs a wet-dry cycle, and it's no good having it buried in moss. So I'm just positioning the moss in such a way that the, I can see the roots through the gaps. That's the theory. So probably don't want much more now. Just a little bit there. Tuck it down in between. Now I can still see the roots, I can still see the gaps. That's what I'm after and away from the base of the plant as well. So that bit's going to have to move. I think that'll do. Yep, happy with that. Dry my hands off again. We can start winding and see how much of that we can secure in one go. Right, oh, it's early in the day to be messing about with this sort of thing, it really is. We go round there. I'm going to come up round there 
to secure those bits. See those bits sticking down there, those are nicely pinched on now. And then come up round this side and see what we can do round here. Oh, there's a nice little niche in the bark there, that was handy. And then I can come back over the top and down this side. Whoops, there goes a big load of moss, let's put that back on. That's because that bit uh, hasn't pulled tight yet. Right, so now we can come down over there. And then we'll have to go around again to grab hold of that bit of moss that just fell off. God, this leaf is in the way. And would you believe it, I've actually run out. Now, that hasn't happened for a very long time. But luckily, there's just about enough to get round the back here and tie. <laughs> that really is only just. <laughs> In fact, it's a bit short. But I can still get a knot. If ever you're trying to tie a fishing line, hang on, let's start again while we're there. Yeah, I've got two ends and I'm going to be tying a knot in air because I've got a short end, yeah? So, right over left and then do it again. Go round again. So you've gone round twice in effect and now when I pull that tight, I was going to say it doesn't come undone but uh, in this case it's got nothing to grab hold of. So we'll do that. And if somebody could just lean in through the camera and put their finger on that knot for me, that would be really useful. <laughs> uh, gotcha. Right. Of course, now my loose end is not in the right place to hang my tag, so I'll put that on later. <laughs> Highly unlikely to forget what it is, even over a long period of time. Let's trim the ends off and I'll have a look and see what I've done. Right, so what we've got then is these roots secured with that turn. These roots, and this is not pulled really tight. This is, it's, it's the, the, the plant is firm, but I'm not pinching the roots any sense. Um, there's some moss down in the gaps there. I've got two loops over this little set of roots. And then coming up round the top, I've got a loop that comes up over there, which holds this one down and then another one that comes round and holds the rest of the top of the plant. I can now just adjust the moss slightly. Right, we'll see how that does. As I said, it still might not make it. If this is, if this is genuinely a virus plant, then it's not going to recover. It's just not going to grow. Um, it's just going to go downhill and um, turn its toes up. But at least I've given it a chance, that's all I can say. So that's um, Sideria japonica, which I believe is the only Phalaenopsis species from Japan. It's all in the name, you know, japonica. <laughs> and we'll see what it does. Uh, I suppose it was worth giving a chance. Strangely enough, although I don't, I don't normally pay money for Phalaenopsis, they tend to be discounted and, um, you know, flowers just going over if ever I buy any. Um, but this one I did actually pay a little bit for. So many people recommended getting this one. You know, if you're going to have a species, oh, get Japonica. The blooms are fragrant, blah, 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 blah. And I fell for it, so I got one. And um, it wasn't a cheap plant. So it is worth giving it a go. There we go, then. Now, that's going to get hung somewhere cool and relatively shady. And we'll see how it does. Um, that's that done. I just want to rinse my hands because I've been touching that plant. I now want to go back to the other one. The reason I'm going back to this one is when you get paling on the leaves, this is often a sign of one or both of two nutrient deficiencies. When you've got paling on the leaves, obviously photosynthesis isn't working as well as it should. That's if you exclude all other problems, of course. Yeah? Like too much light. Um, Magnesium has quite an effect on the way photosynthesis works, yeah? And also, calcium is involved, yeah? And calcium helps give you good colour to your leaves, along with other things. I mean, this, this, this nutrient thing works as a whole. Individual elements do their job. 
but quite a few of them need other elements involved to work properly. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to put some of the dolomite lime on it and water it in. Um, and that should give it a boost of both the calcium and the magnesium um, and see if that helps. Um, as I said, I got, I've just got a feeling, you know, this, this just got underhydrated and fed during that heat period and too much light. Now, although these leaves are naturally pale, they shouldn't be patchy. So we'll see if that perks up. And um, as I said, I don't, don't need to repot that. It's got active growing tips in there. Um, it, it's not a bad root system at all. And it hasn't been in that pot long enough to even worry or even think about worrying about the media itself. So, yeah, two phalaenopsis dealt with, <laughs> reluctantly. But the job's done now. Now I can get on with my watering. Thanks for dropping by and uh, see you next time.